So in construction of the bottom bean bag, I did some quick layout math. I then laid out the pattern with a cloth marker. I cut the pieces out and marked them as I went along. And then I made a half inch sewing area uh, border around each piece. I then pinned the pieces together, making sure that there was at least a three inch hole at the top of the bag so I could fill it with the poly bead filling. I might actually do a second interior bag so that in case there is a rip, it doesn't go everywhere and it's a secondary measure. Here is the bag fully stitched up. There was one problem though. The original idea was to have a one inch tab where I was able to staple it to the side. But unfortunately when you line it up, it's exactly the size of the board. This is no bueno because this takes away my ability to tack it to the board. So, like they say, keep moving forward. What I've devised is I'm going to use some really thin planks from uh, some previous projects I had and I'm going to make a box and I'm going to put uh, four screws uh, for the longer boards and two for the shorter boards. I'm going to screw a border in and make it just the right length. It's going to be about a half inch off from the edges here and over here it's not going to matter because that's the part where it hangs off anyway. So these will be in place. I will staple the bag to this border. I pre-drill the hole on some scrap piece of the wood, which is why you always keep it around. This is the saw-off piece that I had before. As you can see, I practiced stapling in before, and it's a good thing I didn't go with stapling into this wood because it seems like it makes a crack and the veneer itself starts to crack off. I also started stapling into this wood and it seemed like it worked rather well. So I'm going with this. So like I said, pre-drilled, toss the wood screw in, and it holds pretty well even for just one screw here. See, there's barely any lift off here, and that's just from one screw. So I'm going to also put a line of glue just as an extra precaution because, you know, why the hell not? As you can see, I pre-drilled the holes and have the uh, screws poking through just so I can fit into the holes here. So that when I put the glue on, it won't be so hard to line up. Uh, you notice I'm not putting a lot on, it's because there's this huge gap right here. So, like they say in New York City, on the subway, mind the gap. Repeat that three more times. Just like that, it's done, and I'm going to have it dry overnight. So, had to get the bean bag filler. Guess what? Eight stores later, couldn't find filler itself unless you want those itty bitty beads that cost about 10 bucks for 32 ounces. Insane! So, Walmart, 16 bucks, already made. Might be a little big. Oh well. Two bucks. Secondary bag on the inside, in case the outer bag rips. And I want to cover all those scratches I've made on the board and just make it look pretty in general. So, I got some sandable primer. The little tryout paints that actually cover an 8x8 area, as an 8 foot by 8 foot. Can you imagine that? Three bucks! Polyacrylic protective finish. Couple bucks. I got a color that would pretty much look exactly like the board itself, except it won't have that wood finish. Yeah, I compromised somewhere, right? So you thought that your wool clothes had major static cling when they came out of the dryer? You should try dealing with styrofoam beans. Check this out. All right, how the heck do you deal with that? Even latex, it kind of sticks. So I'm trying some latex gloves, doubled. Yeah, they're a little small for me, so they rip like crazy. Let's see how this works. Empty. Apparently it's not just the best part of waking up, it also discharges static electricity like a beast. A little lesson learned from that salt and pepper project I did a while back. Lesson learned and less frustration earned.
So I'm using a smaller hammer, so it's a lot easier and less bending of nails. And I'm using ring shanks nails. Technically they're breads, but at least they're not the wire kind. These are actually forged, they're decent, a lot better, and they're not going to bend as much as those crappy ones I had a while back. So this was originally a draw front, so to fill in the holes that were for the pull handles, I'm using some scraps of balsa wood and some glue, and I'm just sticking them in to fill in the holes, and then when it dries tomorrow, I'll just saw it off with the little uh, miter saw. Just sand it off a little bit. Luckily, this glue is sandable. You sand it off, and the primer will cover it all up, and it'll look nice. This is the next day. All nice and glued down. I'm going to saw these off next. Not worried too much about the scratches because I'm going to be painting it. I had to go out and buy some wood filler. I've applied it, sanded it, and now just spray painted it. And I'll soon move on to the next paint. I swear it's a dark red, not a purple. Probably do about two coats of this and it'll take its final color. After that, we'll shellac it. Now you see there's some brush strokes. I'm going in one particular direction to make it seem like wood. Will it come out in the final product after the second coat? I don't know. It's worth a shot though. There's the Minwax water-based polyacrylic protective finish. It's a crystal clear finish, ultra fast drying, clear satin finish. Uh, it says it takes about a half hour to dry and to use 220 grit sandpaper in between to take out any imperfections. To dedicate about an hour and a half of uh, working time with it. And if you can't, you have to wait 24 hours. So let's hope I can marathon this. See this itty bitty gouge right here? That's what 220 did to it. I'm not really trusting these instructions here. Don't worry about that milky area, it dries up. As I was stapling on the bean bag to the table, I used some blue tape to protect the, uh, the table itself and the paint job. And as I peeled away the tape, the paint, now the example I found was a no sand painting of laminate. And everyone was saying, hey, this works, it's great, it's awesome. Yeah, it didn't work for me. I peeled up the blue tape and the paint all the way down to the primer came with it, except where I sanded it. So I've just sanded it, reapplied the primer, and here we go again with painting. Yay. Okay, so it's finally done. Again. And, you know, it's just a little bit of blemish here, but from what I understand, Chuck wants to cover it up anyway, so it doesn't really matter now. He's going to put a uh, wrist rest here, all the way to here, and he wants to put a non-stick uh, element on here, and the mouse pad on here. So this pad came out pretty well, and it's solid. This project's finally done. It took forever with all the setbacks, and some other things that happened. Oh well, Chuck understood. So I'm going to present it to him. And he already said from the pictures I showed him that he likes it. If you like my videos, please subscribe to another Odd Night. I'm the Odd Night Builder.